Windows 10, the operating system that most of you are using right now on your desktop or laptop computer. Ever since its release back in 2015, people have had mixed reactions to the operating system. But that hasn't stopped it from gaining almost 60% of desktop and laptop computer market share. Although it took quite a while to get to that point. Windows 7, released six years earlier, still remained the number one most used Windows version until early 2018, even though Windows 10 was initially offered as a completely free upgrade. And this was due to the list of concerns people had about Windows 10, with its forcing of automatic updates, data collection, and privacy concerns. Now, whether you love it or hate it, Windows 10 brought a huge transition to the Windows operating system, arguably the largest one in its history. It unified Microsoft's desktop, mobile, and even console operating systems into one single platform. And it was designated by Microsoft as the last version of Windows, as the company would continually release newer versions of the operating system and make them available to existing users for free beginning a new product strategy for the company. So, how did Microsoft make this transition? How did Windows 8.1 and Windows Phone 8.1 become unified under one single platform? In today's video, we're going to explore the development process that eventually led to the creation of Windows 10. But first, a word from today's video sponsor. Xyro is the easy-to-use website builder and e-commerce platform that gives you the tools to create professional-looking websites and online stores, even if you don't have a background in web design or HTML. Get started today for free at the link below and save 30% on any paid plan by using code MJD at checkout. Now, because Windows 10's development is ongoing, this video focuses primarily on the history of Windows 10 prior to its initial release in the summer of 2015, and how its predecessors evolved over time into the operating system that we know today. Although the final release of Windows 10 was publicly released in 2015, the public first caught a glimpse at what Microsoft's next operating system would be like back in 2011. Yes, even before Windows 8 was released to manufacturing. At the company's worldwide partner conference that year, Andrew Lees, who at the time was the company's chief of mobile technologies, commented on the future of Windows, saying, You can have full PC compute power available in whatever form factor you like. We won't have one ecosystem for PCs and one for phones and one for tablets. They'll all come together. Lisa's statement envisioned a single, unified computing platform, one that would bridge the gap between traditional desktop PCs and mobile devices. And that's exactly what Windows 10 did. In the past, Microsoft created operating systems for these platforms that were independent from one another. The flagship Windows operating system was created for use on desktop and laptop computers, but Microsoft also developed Windows Mobile, an operating system for use on pocket PCs and smartphones. This OS is based on the Windows CE kernel, which originated back in 1992 with the WinPad development project, which I did a video on here. And while both of these operating systems were created by the same company, the applications developed for each system were not cross-compatible. Sure, Windows Mobile had applications like Pocket Word and Pocket Excel that provided similar functionality, but they were not exactly the same applications. Pocket Word had some limitations, like a file size limit, and was really only intended to make quick and simple edits to Word documents. I mean, it wouldn't be the most practical thing to write a five-page essay on one of these pocket PCs. Windows Mobile would later evolve into Windows Phone, with the first release in 2010 being known as Windows Phone 7. Two years later, Microsoft would follow up with the release of Windows Phone 8, unveiled on the same day as Windows 8. This release marked a new era for the Windows Mobile and Phone line of operating systems because it made the OS more compatible with the full desktop release of Windows. While all previous versions of the mobile OS were based on Windows CE technology, Windows Phone 8 was based on the NT kernel. This provided a strong foundation for the operating system. 
And because Windows 8 was based on that same kernel, it allowed the two operating systems to share certain features, like use of the NTFS file system and desktop class multitasking. This is where the bridging of the gap between mobile and desktop begins. Windows 10 would expand on this even more by providing a single platform that could be used on different types of devices. In fact, Windows 10 mobile devices could be used like a regular desktop machine when they had a monitor, keyboard, and mouse plugged into them. This was a feature known as Continuum for Phones. Now, since these devices are ARM-based, you obviously can't use this feature to play Steam games or anything like that. But through the use of the Universal Windows platform, developers could create a single application that could be run on Windows 10, Windows 10 Mobile, and even the Xbox One. Continuum for Phones allows you to use these applications just like you would on your desktop computer at home. But unfortunately for Windows 10 Mobile users, Microsoft ended support for it in January of 2020 due to the unpopularity of the platform when compared to iOS and Android. However, we still have to take a look at the desktop side of things. So let's discuss how Windows 8.1 evolved over time into Windows 10. Windows 10 was codenamed Threshold during its development after a planet in Halo. The first few Milestone 1 development builds utilized the same NT version as 8.1, version 6.3. Build 9780 was compiled on June 22, 2014. The biggest change by far in this build is the return of the Start menu. As I'm sure we all know, Windows 8 replaced this interface with the Start screen and got rid of the Start button. And while Windows 8.1 brought back the Start button, it would open up the Start screen when clicked. This new start menu combines elements from both the Windows 7 style start menu and Windows 8's start screen. You can access power options and browse the applications installed on your system on the left side and pin modern UI application tiles to the right. Another feature introduced in Windows 10 was the ability to run modern UI applications in a window on the desktop. And build 9821 from August of 2014 is the first known build to include this feature. It also brought some new icons to the operating system. But it didn't take long for both of these features to be publicly showcased, as in the fall of 2014, Microsoft previewed the first technical preview build of Windows 10, known as 9841. And with it came the introduction of the Windows Insider program another major change in Microsoft's product strategy. For the very first time, the company made certain pre-release builds of Windows available to anybody. All you had to do was sign up for the free Insider program. But Microsoft emphasized that these builds were not in any way a final product and they should not be used on primary systems. It's a system that worked very well for both parties. The insiders were given access to pre-release Microsoft software to test out and write about, and Microsoft got feedback from these insiders identifying bugs and suggesting changes. This was a major shift from previous Windows development cycles, as now the public could follow along with Windows 10 development in real time. But that's not to say that there weren't any leaked development builds, because there definitely were. Build 9901 was one of those builds, leaked in December of 2014. It became notable for its inclusion of the Cortana Virtual Assistant. Although it wasn't the first build to include it, it began circulating online soon after it was leaked, which resulted in various articles and videos on the desktop version of Cortana, including one that I made. This version of Cortana is obviously not complete, but it gave us a good idea at how the feature would work in the final release of Windows 10. You could ask Cortana to do web searches and get data like the current weather conditions, but it could also be used to perform tasks on your PC like setting reminders. It would also respond to you with voice feedback. This build was also one of the first to change the NT version to 10.0, rather than incrementing the version by one as some previous builds did. This was most likely done to make the actual name of the Windows version and its NT version consistent to avoid confusion. 
in build 9909 compiled just 11 days after 9901, we can see the inclusion of the new start menu with the added ability to launch into full screen mode. This build was also the last to use centered title text on Windows, which was reintroduced with Windows 8 after being dropped in Windows 95. Another major introduction with Windows 10 was Edge, Microsoft's new web browser. It was known as Project Spartan during development and could first be seen in build 10014. The technical preview phase of Windows 10's development would end with build 10064, where we can see that visual elements system-wide are becoming more finalized. The start menu moves the power options to the bottom left and makes some changes to the items contained in the left side. The next phase of Windows 10's development began with the release of build 10074 and was known as the insider preview phase. Two months later, Microsoft would compile the final release to manufacturing build of Windows 10, 10240. It was made available to the public as a free upgrade to all Windows 7, 8, and 8.1 users in late July. But after and even before its release, many wondered why it was that Microsoft skipped from Windows 8.1 to Windows 10. Microsoft had a bit of fun with this during an event where some employees were wearing a t-shirt with the Windows logo made up of binary code. Some people ended up translating this and discovered that one of the lines read, Windows 10 because 789. This is obviously a joke that I'm sure we've all heard before, but as far as I can tell, it's the only time that Microsoft actually commented, if you want to call it that, as to why Windows 9 was skipped. It indicates that there really wasn't any technical reason behind it, and was more of a marketing move. But in a popular Reddit post from back in 2014, a supposed Microsoft developer gave some insight, saying that Windows 9 was skipped as many third-party applications would interpret Windows 9 as Windows 95 and 98, causing compatibility issues. However, some have questioned the validity of this theory, saying that applications would check for the actual version number of the operating system as opposed to its release name. Either way, Windows 10 was the name chosen. Since the original release in the summer of 2015, Microsoft has followed up with nine new versions of the operating system. The most recent version known as the May 2020 update. Each one of these releases further improved the operating system by adding new features and tweaking existing settings. While older versions of Windows had service packs, Windows 10 replaces the need for them because the entire operating system is updated periodically for free. Some of these versions were named to correspond with what kind of features they introduced, while others were named after the month and year they came out. The Creators update in April of 2017 had a focus on creativity, introducing features like the Paint 3D application. The May 2019 update gives Windows a new light theme, and the most recent version introduces a new version of the Windows subsystem for Linux and improvements to virtual desktops. Of course, this is just a small list of features added over time, but it's clear that Windows 10 is here to stay but it's absolutely faced criticism over the years. Ever since its release, people have been concerned about its forcing of automatic updates and privacy issues. The default express option during setup in the initial version of Windows 10 would turn on settings that allowed Microsoft to collect things like typing and inking data and would allow more personalized ads to be displayed in certain applications. Now, this is rather ironic, as a few years beforehand, Microsoft ran a huge anti-Google ad campaign called Scroogled, where they criticized the company for invading users' privacy by collecting data from them to display more tailored ads. But that wasn't all Microsoft got complaints for. In 2017, it was revealed that Microsoft began blocking updates to computers running Windows 7 on the latest generation of Intel and AMD processors, despite the fact that Windows 7 still had three years of support left. This was viewed by many as a way for Microsoft to essentially force computer users to update to Windows 10 to further increase its market share, as it did not hold the majority at this point. More recently, Microsoft disabled local account creation during Windows setup unless you are disconnected from the internet. 
I actually did a video covering this topic. But despite people's concerns, Windows 10 has been able to gain a majority of desktop and laptop computer market share, and unless Microsoft ends up creating Windows 11, it likely will stay that way. This video is brought to you by Zyro, the powerful website builder and e-commerce platform that gives you the tools needed to boost your online presence in no time, even if you don't have a background in HTML or web design. They make it easy to get started by offering beautiful, designer-created templates that are specifically tailored to various use cases. Whether you want to create a website or an online store, Zyro has you covered. Using one of these templates, I was able to create a concept of a merch store for my YouTube channel in under an hour. It's incredibly easy to add your own images and rearrange text boxes and buttons just by dragging and dropping. Zyro supports multiple web pages as well, so if you want your website to have a landing page with information about your brand along with a store page, you can do it. When it comes to the store, Zyro not only provides a functional layout for all of your products, but also a powerful backend where you can see order and customer information as well as add new products to your store. You can also configure shipping options and payment methods and create reports to see how your store is performing. And if you're creating a new website, you're also going to need a domain name, and Zyro has you covered here as well. Want to know the best part? You can get started with Zyro today for free. But if you want to get access to more features, like the online store functionality, check out one of their paid plans and get 30% off by clicking the link below and using code MJD at checkout. So I hope you all enjoyed this retrospective look back at the development process behind Windows 10. If you did, be sure to give it a like and get subscribed. And as always, I want to thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.